But um, I do want to get into the CrossFit stuff. I know you yeah. said you've been doing it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So what then like I think I'm I think I'm the same amount of years as, as you, 10 years. So um what made you get into CrossFit and what made you kind of stick with it? So prior to CrossFit, I was never really into like sports in the more traditional sense. I started going to the gym with my mom when I was 13 or 12, turning 13 before school. Mm -hmm. And we just like do the elliptical. And like, that's really pretty much all I did yeah. for years. And then I got into doing yoga. So I got my yoga teaching certification when I was 17 um, because I was interested in doing that. And they were running a program at my gym or studio at my studio. And I decided yep. to jump on board and do that. And I did yoga for a while. And I think I just was looking for something that was a little bit more intense. And this was hot yoga, by the way, hot vinyasa yoga, which yep. is a little bit different than like yeah, yeah. what people think about yoga. It's a little bit more like strength based and you're like heart rates up a little bit more because you're in a hot room. So it's a little bit different. So I did that for a while. And then I was in college and I was looking for something like a little bit more. I was kind of not like burnt out, but I was just didn't feel like I was being challenged in the way I yeah. wanted to be in yoga. Mm -hmm. So I saw CrossFit and there was like probably a six month period that I was like a little bit intimidated by it and didn't know if I wanted to jump on board. with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I was home for the summer and I mentioned to my mom that I was considering doing CrossFit and she worked out with me. She's who got me into the gym when I was 12. So she wanted to go do the foundations at me. She didn't end up liking it. She doesn't do CrossFit. But I did liked it a lot. We did the foundations together. So I kept going throughout that summer. And then when I went back to Syracuse, I joined CrossFit Syracuse and went there, you know, five or six days a week, which is off campus, drove over to the gym. And uh, then I just sort of stuck with it. I've enjoyed the fitness aspect of it, the challenge of it, the really pushing yourself harder. And then I think one of the things that is so special about CrossFit and one of the things that's kept me part of it for so long is the community. I know like we all hear that so much, yeah, like, the community, yeah. CrossFit, the community, but I've moved a ton as we've went over <laughs> and finding a CrossFit gym in all of these places is something that's allowed me to like make friends and really enjoy being in these new spaces. Like a lot of people that I've met in broadcasting a lot of times people leave broadcasting because of having to move, having to give up your friends, having to be far away from your family, all of that. It pulls people away from the industry because that's what you have to do to get the experience. If you're yep. from New York City, like I am, that's the market I'm from. You're not going to start on air in New York City at 22 years old or out of college. Just not going to happen. It's not very mm. likely to happen, at least anything could happen, but it's not very likely to happen. So you have to yeah. expect that you're going to have to pack up your bags and move to a random city you may have never heard about before and live in that community for two to three years to get the experience before you can go on to something else mm -hmm. and having crossfit it's a place to find a community and to find friends and to have something to do and to have this group of people who like begin to care about you and check in on you and are like hey where have you been that kind of stuff and I think that's what a lot of people in this industry lose and why they leave the industry and why people drop out of broadcasting along with the feedback that isn't always great, <laughs> but, but adding in the fact that you're like out of your element, um, whatever safety nets you may have had in your life up until that point are likely gone and mm -hmm. you have to like be on your own and having a dog also, I think has uh, <laughs> helped out a lot too with yeah. moving so much and starting over, over and over again, but having a gym and a place to go every single day and meet people and talk to people is super significant. And I think it's like the thing that keeps a lot of people coming back to CrossFit and something that has really made my life and my career, I think um, more obtainable because I had, I knew wherever I moved, I was going to have this community of, at the time they were strangers, but they were going to be there. I didn't know who they were going to be, yeah. but that I would find them. And like, it's this group of people that have similar values and interests as you, and you could find them in one place, like a regular mm -hmm. gym. You don't talk to people in the same way you talk to a CrossFit people at CrossFit gyms. No, it's no. odd to go up to people and have the same kind of conversations and then the group suffering, you know, that's special. 
Yeah. And so, so with, with me, I went, I did the open at a, uh, so what I train at a 24 hour gym, it's like a, uh, it's like a power lifting gym that has like mm -hmm. bumper plates and all the stuff for CrossFit. And so like, it's just me and one other guy. And then I have like a couple of the people that I've talked to before, but it's just like everyone else, like everyone keeps themselves, gets like the big headphones on and like yeah. super quiet. And then I did the open at a CrossFit gym uh, in my town. And I was like, Hey, you know, can I do it here? And the only reason why I'm not there is because it's opens at five 30 and I get, I, start, I, I work out at the gym at four 30 in the morning. Okay. So, so I was like, Hey, you know, can I train here? Can I like do the open here? And they're like, yeah, abs absolutely. And every single person there welcomed me with open arms mm -hmm. and saying, and like, no one was just like walked in being like, who's, who's this guy and kept on walking and doing their own thing. Everyone came up to me, said, Hey, how you doing? What do you like? You know, what's your name? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I do like about CrossFit. Cause like, like you said, it's like a whole community of suffering and mm -hmm. it's, they're all friends and they know they they're in there to get to be better and then leave and do whatever, do what else they need to do with mm -hmm. their life and stuff like that. So that's the one thing I really do miss about going to a CrossFit gym. Yeah, I used to go to Diablo CrossFit, like I mentioned, and the owner, Craig Howard, I remember after one of the workouts, he said something. He wasn't even coaching that day. He was just taking class. And this has stuck with me. I don't think I've ever mentioned it to him. But he just said, hard things make happy people. And it's something that sort of like is stuck in my head. Like, I think the idea of like doing something hard every day that's like going to challenge your body, going to challenge yeah. your mind it's going to make you feel so much better throughout the rest of the day and more confident. Yep. And, and it also breeds community. And I think there's something really special about CrossFit, the methodology, and then the people that it attracts. Yes. And also when you go to the beach or go to someplace else, everyone knows who the alpha is at the beach. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. The alpha, yeah, alpha male or alpha female. They're like, Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. They either are on steroids or they do CrossFit. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. I went to an event at a friend's house. It was, I play a lot of board games in my, mm. uh, in my downtime. And it was a friend I know through a bunch of board game stuff. And I was there and the woman asked me if I was his trainer. I'm like, no, <laughs> why, would, why would I be his trainer? Why would I, why would I be at this board game event? I'm like, no, I know him because I play board games with him. Uh, <laughs> but like, I guess just, you know, people look at your body and like assume things even when they don't make any sense. Yep. Yep. And it's funny. Cause like, I, I get a lot of people saying, Oh, how much do you bench? And like, yeah, crossfitters, we, we, yeah. we don't bench that much. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't benched in like six months. So yeah. like, you don't bench press. I'm like, no. And like, what do you do? And I'm like, CrossFit. And they're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And then half the people don't, don't really recognize CrossFit as an actual, like, way of exercise and they just see like the the games and they just are like oh you know steroids or like no reps whatever like just like completely like just crap on crossfit cross cross people that do crossfit yeah it's it's unfortunate crossfit is a little bit polarizing and i think part of that is because it works i think things that are successful you know and are hard right like people don't want to do the hard things that we do in crossfit yeah people don't want to hurt like we heard in CrossFit. So if they could say like, that's fake, it's a no rep. It's uh, that's not a good workout. Like then they don't have to do it. They don't have to do mm -hmm. the hard thing. They can be, they can just delegitimize it so that they don't have to ever like step in and give it a try. Like it is hard today. I worked out alone just cause I had to do some other things and couldn't go to a class. And it was a workout that was five rounds two minutes on one minute off two minutes of 12 burpee box jump overs and Ooh. then as many wall balls as possible that's hard it's and just like alone just like to do wall balls forever like there's no one around like i was alone in the gym no one was even there i'm like you can stop but i'm like i'm not gonna stop because like i won't be proud of myself yeah if I yeah stop. yep exactly but it would be easier to stop and like i think a lot of people I think a lot of people want to do the easier thing, mm -hmm. even if they don't say it. <laughs> yeah. I think subconsciously a lot of, and I think as a society, we've made things super easy. Like our lives are relatively comfortable. Like we, as humans used to like, you know, forage and hunt. And now we uh, sit at a desk and type. Yep. And call Grubhub or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, I, I do those things too. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with those things, but I do mm -hmm. think that our bodies and our minds are meant to do hard things. And uh, it can become easy to slip into a place of doing the easier thing when that's like what, you know, surrounds you. Like there's so many products that come out to make life easier. Everything's about like, how do we make things easier? Yep. And yep. I think it's not, it goes back to hard things make happy people. I think if you do hard things, you're just going to feel happier long term. Mm -hmm. <laughs>